Today we're starting some. Well, let me go. Let me tell my story. I got a little story for you. You mind? Okay. I, I thought it was cute. You might not like it. I don't know. There's a new minister, er, a minister at a church, who was asked to teach the boys Sunday school class because the teacher couldn't make it. So he thought, you know, I'm going to find out what these kids know, which is what we do. That's our job as a pastor to find out what you know. So he asked the boys, he said, uh, who knocked down the walls of Jericho? All the boys denied having done it. <laughs> and the preacher was absolutely appalled at their ignorance. So at the next elders meeting, he was there and, and he told them what happened. He said, you know, not one of them knows who knocked down the walls of Jericho. And he, just, he was just so beside himself about that whole thing. Finally, an, an older elder who had been through the, been down the road, and and uh, he'd been able to handle disputes and things pretty well. And he said, "Pastor, I can see that this is troubling you quite a bit." Now, let me just say that uh, I know all these boys. I've known them since they were born, and I know that they're good boys. And if they say they don't know who knocked down the walls of Jericho, well, I believe them. <laughs> so, what say we just? take a little money out of the building fund and we just fix those walls and let it go at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, boy. One thing is sure for sure, it tells you what you got to work with when you find that out, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, this morning we're kicking off the theme for a new year, Believe. We got a banner up there. You got this, I believe. What do you believe? And, in fact, we have this uh, that Kathy's uh, niece made, um, chalk work and stuff and it's really cool we saw that at christmas and so we said hey mandy can you make one for us and so she did and, and got that up here this week and so we're, we're starting off why do you, you know what do you believe why do you believe it and how are you living it out in your life a lot of times we say we believe this and we believe that but it's not evidenced in our life i believe that for example i believe that gm's a great car but i drive a ford I mean, you know what I'm saying? So do you believe it or not, and is it lived out in your life? Um, so we're going to be looking at that this year, and, and uh, we're starting this series off with uh, this theme of believe this year with a series of tr called True Confessions. Now, before you get too far, <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, yeah, you know, True Confessions of the Everyday Housewife. There was books or a magazine that was written, so it's not like that, okay? So it's nothing going to be that questionable that <gasps> that church is doing. I had, I had some, I had, your brother came in, and I won't mention his name here because Lester wouldn't like it, and so uh, <laughs> he, he, he said something to me last week about that. Said, no, no, not like that. Actually, actually, pardon your be before Christ days, your BC days, yeah, yeah, that's good to leave those back in the past, isn't it? Anyway, so what I we are uh, we have an, an opportunity as a church family. You know, we our name's been changed to protect the innocent. <laughs> anyway, our names are changed, and new things are coming down the pike for us. And we have a, this may sound funny to you, but we have a great opportunity that a lot of churches don't have, and that is to reinvent ourselves. To take a look at us. Who are we? What do we believe? What are we about? To do a reinvention process and say, you know, this is who we are. And so when, when RMC Rexton Mennonite Church was founded back in 49, it was founded on a confession of faith, an, uh, under, a document of what we believe. Uh, from the Indiana Michigan Conference, the Mennonite Church, and then later called the um, 1995 Confession of Faith from a Mennonite Perspective. And that's what we, we found it on. We lived it. We, we, that's guided us. This is what we believe. This, you want to know who we are? Here you go. Read that. That's, that's who we are. Now, I, so I thought, you know what? If we're going to look at another group that we might want to be a part of, it really makes sense to know what do we believe, what do we believe in? Are we going to hold on to that before we join another group, before we say we're going to be part of somebody else? Because if they don't believe the same way we do, we'll be unequally yoked, and that is no good, right? So we need to know what we believe and why. So we're going to go, and I thought, you know, a good way is I'm going to go through this 
confession of faith that we've had. And we're going to look at this over the next week of this reinventing process. So today is an introductory in- introduction to my series that we're going to be doing it. As a lot of you know that I've been uh, working out, getting back at it three days a week, so I, I thought I'd come dressed like this. You know what's funny is no one except Sarah is the only one that ever said anything. Well, look how Tim's dressed, you know. She's, and she said, actually, it was a bit self-serving, Sarah, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was why, why didn't you tell me you could dress like that so I could dress like that too? <laughs> so it makes me feel good because that means I could dress like this again if I can get out of the house. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so... Um, I wore this, working out, we're working out um, three days a week now, it's getting tougher, and it's getting harder, but it's, we're trying to work, become healthier, and do better. The thing is, it's a real love-hate relationship for me, with this working out. You know, I, I, I really love the results, but I hate getting there. Do you know what I'm saying? It takes work, and it's tough. Exercise is very important. Doctors tell us Right, Jeff? That exercise is important, that it helps us in many different ways, helps us keep mentally alert, helps us get a good night, helps me sleep better, helps me function better. It does, I can do a lot of things better when I'm in better physical shape. In fact, if you go to a ball game, a basketball game, a football game, the team that's in the best physical shape will do better at the end of a ball game. They'll make better mental decisions, and they'll play better too. So that's important. And, and one area... Um, well, when people work out a lot of times, especially younger guys, they want guns. They want the big guns, you know. They work the arms. Have you ever seen somebody who's got this, this big chest and big arms, but he doesn't have anything in the legs? You know, you know that he's been doing this all the time, you know, and, he, and he's doing squats and he's doing that, but he's not working legs, you know. And so sometimes people do that, but there's one area that's neglected a lot by people who don't, I think, don't know any better, and that's the core. Your core, your body's core. Your body's core goes from about here to here. It in contain, contains muscles in your side, in your back, in your gluteus maximus muscles. <laughs> that's, that's Latin for you know what, <laughs> and for where you sit. And it, and it includes the pelvic muscles as well as abdominal muscles. And it's important. The core forms this really strong central link, link between your upper body and your lower body. And exercising your core when you do that, it helps your whole body and everything to work together, to work in harmony. It gives you, gives you better balance and stability. In fact, a few years ago, when we were doing these exercises, Bruce Gustafson from Nobbin Way was working out with us. After you know, maybe a month, he said, you know, he wasn't really great at them, but he said, you know, I have, I can, my balance is better. I can, I can balance better and stuff. And he knew, noticed that. This is interesting. I came across this article from the Mayo Clinic. Anyway, moving on. Everybody in video lane will see this. Okay, um, it said from the Mayo Clinic, strong core muscles make it easier to do everything from swinging a golf club to getting a glass from the top shelf or bending down to tie your shoes. Weak core muscles leave you, leave you susceptible to poor posture, lower back pain, and muscle injuries. And it is so true. In fact, I went on and I, found a, I read an article from the Harvard Medical School It said this, no matter where motion starts, it ripples upward and downward through the core. That means a strong, flexible core underpins almost everything you do. Everyday acts, bending to put on shoes or pick up a package, turning to look behind you, sitting in a chair or simply standing still are just a few of the many mundane actions that rely on your core. Even basic activities of daily living, like bathing or dressing, call on core muscles. Now, I'm telling you this just to give you an idea of of what your core represents, how important it is for a strong physical core. Now, as us guys are working out, we work out Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and when we work out, here's kind of what we go through. Several things happen. First of all, we have a warm-up. We do about 10 different moves, 30 seconds each, just to warm up, because you need to, you can't just go and work out a cold body, you got to stretch your muscles, you got to get them going, so we'll do things like, you know, getting your, just getting your knees high, just get the blood flowing, and do some things like that, and then we'll do some, some stretches, just simple stretching way up here, in fact, Zeke was saying that, you know, it helped him so much, that he appreciated, he thought, you know, my guys ought to do this, and he even, he even made the, the, uh, the uh, observation that, 
When a dog gets up from laying down, or a cat, what's the first thing it does? It stretches. What do we do? We get up and go take off, don't we? We don't do anything like that. So there's something, too, about stretching, you know. And so you stretch, you work out. You may do knee highs. We do, we do um, different things. Maybe do good old jumping jacks. We, we love those jumping jacks, right? We love to work those out. I don't like jumping jacks at all. Anyway, we do those and do several other things and get good and warmed up. Uh, next is the workout. The workout's it, right? That's what we're there for. We're there to work out, especially work the core out. And this includes... A lot of different workouts. It, one of the things that is really good for the core is called planks. Who knows what a plank is? Yeah. Now, they have different planks. One plank would be an upper plank where you, you, you just like this and hold the position. Or you can get down on your elbows like this. Last year, I did the plank, and I did, a, I did the 30-day uh, plank challenge where I had to hold this. You start with, um, I think it was 30 seconds a day for a few days a week. And you keep building it up and keep going, and finally you get to um, five minutes. Andrea was there, and she goes, and I said, I have to do this. I think she came over or something. I have to do this plank thing. She said, I'll time you. It was like three minutes, and she couldn't believe I could do three minutes. But because you build it up, you do better. And then we do some other things like Supermans. You know what a Superman is? Who knows Supermans? Not yeah. Well, Superman is simply like this. You're gonna think this is easy, but I want you to go home and try this. You lay on your stomach, put your arms out, bring your feet up, and, and your arms up, and you look at Metropolis and try to see where all the mad, bad people are. You know, and you hold that, and you think, oh, that doesn't look so hard. Trust me, it's great core work. You do those things, and you work up a sweat, and. And, uh, you know, it really gets you. So a large, um, a large portion of our time is consumed with the workout because that's the main event. And an important part of this workout, I think, anyway, is every so often we get a one-minute water break. We get a break. And it's, you know, you drink water, you drink some recovery fluid or something like that, just for a minute. Now, the reason I like it is because, man, I'm getting whipped, you know especially when you haven't done it for a while. Now, as I work out, the more better in shape I get, the less I feel I need it, but you still need the water break. It helps your body recover a little bit, but it's short enough that your body doesn't cool down. You don't want to cool down. You want to keep warm and, and keep doing it. It's important. So after a, a sweat-drenching workout, one more really important aspect is the cool down. At the end of the workout, we do a cool down. It's like the warm-up just before you begin. Um, the cool down is equally important. It helps your muscles to recover. It helps them um, get back in line. And we do things like, they call this the downward dog. So we're, we've worked out. We'll, we'll do some stretches, you know, and, just, and, and things. And we'll do a downward dog, and you put your heels down, and it really pulls the calf muscles, and it stretches things. And then we do the cat, wh when you arch your back like a cat, you know, and then you bring, bend your back and get your spine back into shape, and it helps things line up, and you're, you're cooling down. In fact, one of the things you do is finally at the very end, you get down like this, and you just stretch it all out. You're really good. And you stretch different ways, and, and that's really good. It feels good at the end of the workout. So you're thinking right now, is he going to talk about exercising all morning, or is he going to preach to us? Yeah, well, relax, because here it comes. <laughs> Just like our bodies have core muscles, spiritually, we have core muscles as well. And we need to develop these core muscles. In fact, Paul told the Corinthians about why he's so fervent about the gospel and why he trains himself. He says all athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we don't do it for that. We do it for an eternal prize so I run with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing, and shadow boxing is one of the core workouts we do. In our training for physical fitness, especially our spiritual core, which is our beliefs, what do you believe? And I mean really believe, because that's what helps get you through life. I don't, I don't, I'm not talking about what you think is right, but what do you really, really believe? What do you know that you know that you know? What is it that you really hang on to that gets you through life? 
just as your physical core is a starting point for virtually everything you do, every activity, your spiritual core plays a huge role in every aspect in your life here on earth. You need to know what you believe, and it starts with the core. Peter says, this is what's going to happen. You will have some false teachers in your group. They'll secretly teach things that are wrong, teachings that will cause people to be lost. Many will follow their evil ways and say evil things about the way of truth. And we're seeing that all the time. Not just in necessarily a church, but we're seeing people who are coming against the church. We see people who are saying, you know, there's more than one way to heaven. We see people who say, you know, there's more than one God. We see people who are saying this, and we see Christians who are buying into this stuff all the time. Paul says this to Timothy, but have nothing to do with worldly fables. Discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness, for bodily discipline is only of little profit, meaning all the work out we do only profits for a little bit because we're on earth for this long, but we're in glory for infinity and beyond, right? But godliness is profitable for all things since it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. It is a trustworthy statement, deserving full acceptance. For it is for this we labor and strive, because we have fixed our hope on the living God. Do you believe that? Do you Have you fixed your hope on the living God, or is your God dead? We fix our hope on a living God, and that's one thing that people, other people from other religions can't say. Their God's dead. But our God is alive and well. And he goes on to say, who is the living God who is a savior of all men, especially for you and me, the followers of Jesus, the believers? Prescribe and teach these things. How long? Until I come. Give attention to the public reading of Scripture, to exhortation and to teaching. So when someone tells you that that something that's not true about God, about Jesus, about the Holy Spirit, will will your belief system that you have help you stand against that? God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, those are pretty central in our core beliefs, aren't they? They're pretty central to what we have. And if you don't have that, we've got to develop that. We have to help you grow in that. Will it be strong enough not just to know the truth, but will you be strong enough to stand for the truth? That's what we're going to have to do more and more. For example, you you might tell me that you love Jesus. And I'd say, well, that's nice, but that's not enough. And you might say, well, Tim, what are you talking about? That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says the Bible says that we just need to believe in Jesus. John eleven twenty five. 25, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even if he dies, and, and everyone who lives believes, even if he die, will live even if he dies, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And I would say, well, that's true, but, but James 2, 19 says that even de- demons believe and shudder. It's not just about believing. I want you to know that you know that you know. In fact, I don't want you to be, to love Jesus. That's going to sound really heretical, isn't it? But I want you to be in love with Jesus. When we say, I love Jesus, we love the notion of a Savior. We love the notion that someone died for me. But when I say, I'm in love with Jesus, that means I know him personally. That means I have a relationship with him personally. And it's not just the notion that he died for me because I know that he went to the cross for me. You see the difference between those two? So we don't want to just be uh, love Jesus, but we want to be in love with Jesus. And that's what a strong core does for us. So in our spiritual training, like in my physical training, we had a warm-up. What's the warm-up? What's the warm-up going to be? Well, I think the warm-up is when you and I spend time on our own. Spend time in the Word daily. Spend time seeking the Lord to guide us. Spend time in in worship daily. That's the warm-up. That's that's getting ready for the day. That's getting ready and keeping keeping God in your midst. Spending time that way. Maybe you've had those hard times. You've had a, a day or a week or whatever where things just didn't go right. And maybe you had a time when it seemed like, you know, God, where in the world were you? And then as you look back on your day, you remember that, oh, I didn't have any time with God today. I didn't invite him into the life today to be active in the life. He's in your life, but sometimes we have to invite him to be active in our life, right? You ever have those days that are just kind of like, what in the world? And you realize, oh, you know, I'm not dialed in. I didn't do my warm-up. 
When we warm up by spending time with the Father, we get tuned in to what He wants for the day and what He's planned. So we warm up. Then what's a workout? Easy. The workout's every day. The workout is everyday life. Stuff comes at us in different ways, and we're working out at, at doing this. We spend our time, you know, we, we, I see our spiritual workout as living out the truths we learn from spending our time in the Word. Some days are just plain tough. How many know? Some days are just flat out tougher than other days. And it's knowing that we have a Father who loves us, knowing that Jesus died for Here, Here's for me. If I have a day that's really tough, as long as I know that my Father loves me enough to send His Son to die for me, that's good. I go back to that for a base every time. That, you know, this stuff the world throws at me is nothing. It is nothing at all compared to what Jesus did for me. And I rest on that. And I am so grateful for that. And I worship the Father for that. And I go back and, and center in on that stuff all the time because that's what matters. The stuff that happens is temporary in this world. That helps me. My core is strong enough that I can run through those difficult times. Do they hurt and are they painful? Yeah. I mean, no, I don't care what the world throws at you. I'm not and I'm not saying that it doesn't hurt. It isn't painful. It is. But as long as God is for me, who can be against me? When the world comes for, at me, I say, I worship you, God, because you alone are worthy of my praise and glory. We're going to later on this year, we're going to get into some things about prayer. And and uh, it's. The twist is going from a need-based prayer to a worship-based prayer. And, and that we'll get into that about May, June. And so that's going to be really shaky up a little bit. Come tonight, and it'll shake you up, too, as far as that goes. But that's, it's sometimes it's just, it's just a workout some days. Just like a physical workout works different muscles for different times. You don't work the same muscle over and over and over and over. You've got to give it a break. So you work different muscles to, to grow in proportion physically, to be physically fit. We have to work out different muscles. One day might be God says, you know, I need to develop love in you. So things will come our way, and he's working us to be more loving. One day our workout might be, you need to be a little bit kinder. So he's working out things to be more kinder. How many, how many know there is that day when he says, you need to develop patience? <laughs> huh? You know that day comes. And boy, oh boy, we really work on patience those days. So we have different areas and different seasons. You know, in our spiritual life, you're not going to stay in the same place. Hopefully you don't. As a baby, you grow and you mature. So we come into different seasons of life and we move into different seasons and out of seasons and we go to this and the changes happen as we mature spiritually. Here's the thing about workouts. As you're working out, you can work out physically as hard as you want, but if you don't watch what you put into your body, you can't, you can't, I had a physical trainer tell me, a trainer, a personal trainer tell me this, you can't out-train poor eating habits you know you you can if you eat junk and you think you can outwork that you're mistaken you can't do it the same thing goes in our spiritual lives in our spiritual bodies so often we have people that do the warm-up but go out and live like the world go out and do what the world does they don't even enter into the workout because we're going along with the flow we're not even going to come against this we're not even going to stand for this we're just going to keep following through that we go through the warm up but not the workout and you know what you can't just do a warm up and not a workout it doesn't work that way it takes discipline it takes goals it takes keeping our eyes fixed on the end results I know that for me, physically, when I'm physically working out, I know what the benefits are. I know I started three years ago, I was over 200 pounds working out. By the, three months later, I was, I was 30 pounds lighter. I was a lot better shape, a lot more fit. My mind worked better. My sleep was better. Every, yeah, I know, Lester's pretty amazed. Your mind worked better? I couldn't tell. <laughs> but trust me, I mean, things work better when we do that. So that keeps me motivated to want to work out. If you remember, there's another part I mentioned about the workout during the workout. That's the water break, the recovery drink. So what's that? I believe that's very simple. It's when you and I, we've had a tough week. We come together as a church family and we worship. We spend time together. We encourage each other. 
Hebrews 10 tells us this. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not, not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. According to this, we come together, and as we do, we encourage each other. You know what? If When you come in this room, and you sit in these chairs, and you have to find a seat, aren't you more encouraged by the simple fact that the house is full than you are when there's hardly anybody here? Your presence here makes a difference in everybody's lives, whether it's verbally communicated or not. We miss you when you're not here. But the other thing is we encourage each other. I know when we're working out, you know, somebody, yeah, we slam each other too. I mean, we do that when we're physically working out. But, but as somebody's getting better at something, we say, wow, you're really looking good. Wow, the workout's happening. We need to do that as brothers and sisters. It says how we stimulate one another. How, how long to do it? All the more as you see the day of the Lord coming. The closer he gets, the more we're working, encouraging each other all the time. And don't forget the water breaks. They help in the recovery process. Um, so this is our spiritual workout in our daily life. As we work out spiritually to strengthen our core. The daily life seems to go a lot better. I know for me, the fitter I get, the healthier I get, the lot easier the workouts are to do. We had one workout, a core workout, where it's heels to the heavens. You lay your you lay on your back and you put your heels up and you gotta keep thrusting them up with your pelvis. Man, I couldn't do those. I can now. I can. I don't like them, but I can do them, which is a big benefit when you can start doing some things and doing them right. Last year, I was at a time when I'd go work out and I'd come home and Kathy say, well, how many push-ups did you do today? And I'd do, I don't know, 130 in a session, 140 in a session. And, and this year, because we just started, <laughs> no way I'm doing those, you know. I, the other day I did pulled up 25 push-ups and I just about had it at one crack so you know you got to keep it up you got to hang in there because good results will happen a good spiritual saying you know we have a saying as we encourage each other in the workout is do your best and forget the rest a good spiritual saying is because there are spiritual aspects that are so important like forgiveness maybe a better, better spiritual saying is do your best and forgive the rest it's amazing how healthy you can be with forgiveness at your side. There's another element I mentioned at the onset of, of our workouts, and that's a cool down. The cool down at the end of the workout helps our muscles recover. So in using our analogy, a spiritual cool down, I believe, is a time when we get to stretch and let those muscles recover. Our spiritual cool down is that great and glorious day when we're with the Lord. Remember those stretches I showed you at the beginning? I just think one day our spiritual cool down will be spiritually stretching. And we'll be stretching before the Lord. Except our stretch will be a lot like the ones that we do physically. But it will be, Father God, you are great and glorious. You are mighty. You're awesome. Holy, holy is our God. Father, I thank you.